Hey guys, welcome back to Ask Cam Doc. My name's Shane and I'm a final year medical student and neuroscience supervisor at the University of Cambridge. And this is how to present your clinical examination findings. <laughs> So let's start off with step one, which is where you begin by conveying to the examiner the patient demographic and current condition. So that might be something like, today I saw a six-year-old gentleman from the end of the bed who looked alert and oriented. Step two, you present your inspection findings. What did you see from the end of the bed, around the bed, any paraphernalia of disease, as well as all the things that you picked up on uh, when you were inspecting him? So, for example, if you're doing a cardiovascular examination, you might comment on any nail findings, any findings in the palm, any findings on the arm, his pulse rate, blood pressure, any findings in the neck, the face and the chest or the precordium. OK, so what are the things you should include and what are the things to leave out? So there is always a situation where you should obviously report your positive findings. So if you could see splint hemorrhages, so obviously say that you saw them, or Jane Ray lesions, Oslo nodes, etc. But it's also nice to report on any important negatives or things that you couldn't see. So, for example, um, those things that I mentioned, like Oslo nodes and Jane Ray lesions, are nice negative things to mention when they're not present because it shows that you did look for it, but they're not there. And learning what's an important positive and what's an important negative to mention comes with experience and the best place to pick that up would be to go through your Geeky Medics PDF which details all the important things to look for and if you learn that you have a pretty good idea of what are the major things to look for and even if you mention maybe one or two negatives or actual positives that you can see it's good enough and you can move on to step three. So step three is presenting your palpation and percussion findings. So Obviously, this would both apply to your RESP and ABDO exam, but for your cardio exam, you don't really percuss anything, so it's just the palpation. So you present your findings in terms of where the apex beat was, um, how the chest or uh, chest expansion was, uh, etc. And you also should report on any percussion findings, for example, if it was resonant um, or if it was dull, etc. Then move on to step four, which is when you talk about anything that you heard on auscultation. So, for example, if you were doing a cardio exam, uh, you could say something like, I heard first and second heart sounds with no added sounds. Or if you were doing a respiratory examination, I heard normal vesicular sounds with no added sounds. Or you could say, I heard bronchial breathing, etc. Whatever that you do end up hearing. Which brings us on to the final step, step five, which is when you finish this off by summarizing the patient in one sentence. So you could be saying something like, this is consistent with a normal cardio exam, or this is consistent with a patient who has ischemic heart disease or heart failure, etc. And at the end, you should also include what further investigations or examinations that you want to do in order to complete. So for the cardiovascular examination, I have a mnemonic, which is COPETH. So C is for capillary blood glucose, U is for urinalysis, P is for a peripheral vascular disease examination, and E is for ECG, and F is for a fundoscopy. So like that, I suggest further investigations that I want to do, or examinations that I want to do in order to fully complete. And that is a good way of wrapping everything up and summarising and ending your presentation of the clinical examination findings. So hopefully you guys have found this video very useful and if you have, please like, follow and share. Make sure as many medical students as possible finds out about us and makes use of us. But that's it for me for today and I'll see you guys next time.